Yeah, here's a couple of examples on Gay-Lussac's law. Uh, Gay-Lussac's law is between uh, the relationship between pressure and temperature, not much different from Charles' law. Okay, so we have a pressure of a gas in a tank at 3.20 atm at 22 degrees Celsius. Uh, if the temperature rises to 60 degrees Celsius, they want to know is what will be the new pressure, what will be the new gas pressure. So again, once you have fractions with variables, you should go ahead and cross multiply to get rid of the fractions. So P1 times T2 equals P2 times T1. We're going to make a list of variables. In this case, it's going to be pressure uh, and temperature. So P1, T1. P1, T1, P2, T2. Okay, pressure 1 is going to be 3.20 atm. That's my P1. And they're saying we have 22 degrees Celsius. Uh, P2 is what we're looking for. That's my X. T2 is going to be 60 degrees Celsius. All right, um, my... Uh, same units for all my variables, but temperature has to be in Kelvin, cannot be in um, cannot be in Celsius. So I'm going to go ahead and convert 22 degrees Celsius. Oops. So 22 plus 273 is going to be 295 for that, and 60 plus 273 can be 333 so this is going to be 295 Kelvin and this is going to be 333 Kelvin all right uh, I need to isolate P2 because that's my X so P2 needs to be by itself I'm going to divide both sides by T1 P1 here is going to cancel out. I'm left with P1 times T2 divided by T1 equals P2. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start plugging everything into the formula. P1 is 3.20 atm times T2, which is going to be 333 Kelvin. Divide that by T1, which is going to be 295 Kelvin. Right, so everything's set up correctly, numbers in the right spot. I'm going to go ahead and plug into the calculator 3.20 times 333 divided by 295, and I'm going to get it to be 3.61, and we're talking about pressure, so 3.61 atm. Uh, the relationship between pressure and temperature is linear, is a direct relationship. So as pressure increases, 3.2 to 3.61, temperature increases, 295 to 333, and that's consistent with uh, Gay-Lussac's law. Okay, example number two. Um, the pressure in an automobile tire is 1.88 atm at 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, they want to know what it will be the pressure if the temperature warms up to 37 degrees Celsius. So they want to know the new pressure. Again, I'm going to cross multiply my variables to get rid of the fraction. So P1 times T2 equals P2 times T1. I'm going to make a list of variables. P1 equals 1.88 atm uh, t1 should look let's look first p2 and t2 okay t1 i see i have 25 degrees celsius uh, p2 is my x and t2 is going to be 37 degrees celsius Okay, um, I cannot have my Celsius uh, temperatures in Celsius. I gotta convert it to Kelvin. So, 25 plus 273. Um, it's gonna be 298. And for the other one, 37 plus 273. It's gonna be 310. 
Okay, so 25 degrees Celsius here is going to be 298 Kelvin. Always got to convert to Kelvin. And 37 will be 310 Kelvin. Okay, I need to isolate P2 in this expression. So that means I have to divide both sides by T1. T1 cancels out. I'm left with P1 times T2 divided by T1 equals P2. All right, so P1 is 1.88. ATM times T2, in this case it's going to be 310. Divide this all by uh, T1, which is 298. Alright, so I'm done setting it up. All the numbers look like they're in the right spot. I'm going to use the calculator now. 1.88 times 310 divided by 298 and that's going to equal 1.96 ATM so let's um, see if it's consistent with Gay-Lussac's law which is a direct relationship uh, my pressure is 1.88 goes up to 1.96 that means my temperature goes from 298 to 310 so as pressure goes up temperature goes up and that's consistent with Gay-Lussac's law.